Well, as Anthony Albanese and his Labor team bunker down in Canberra tonight to plan their approach to government and the trip to Tokyo for the Quad, the losers will need to sift through the ashes of defeat to work out what went wrong, who takes the reins and how they can be competitive in 2025. It sounds like a long way off. I think Albo will definitely have lost all his hair by then. Joining us now is outgoing Environment Minister Susan Lee, who remains in the Parliament, by the way, after comfortably retaining the seat of Farris. Susan Lee, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure, Chris. Great to be on the program. How tough is this to cop? It's tough. Uh, I feel pretty bruised. My party is bruised. I've been here before, obviously, in 2007 when we lost government. And uh, everything happens pretty quickly. I'm in the car very early tomorrow to drive to Canberra to decommission my office, pack everything in boxes and uh, look for somewhere else to camp in the building. But uh, the real lessons from the election are actually not about the individuals. They're about the people that are out there that are our supporters, many, many, many of whom voted for us. And I thank those who contributed to the swing towards me in my seat of Farah. And um, rebuilding and... Um, making sure that we're strong and determined and there for Liberal Party values. Was what went wrong solely on the public's perception of the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, or was it a little bit more complex than that? It's incredibly complex, and there are many different stories to unravel from this campaign and this result. And they're different across Australia because... I mean, the primary vote for Labor wasn't resounding. No. It really wasn't. And a lot of people voted for others or someone that they didn't know very well or the Greens because that was a bit of a protest. And as I said, here in my seat, I actually was returned with a greater majority. And people who talked to me at my booth, and I stood on pre-poll for two weeks, uh, they like the Prime Minister. They like what he did for the country and they like what our team did. But we have to listen to the messages from the electorates that booted us out. And unless we do that respectfully and sincerely, we can't possibly build back a party that at the, at the moment feels pretty shattered. But, Chris, I'm an optimist. You know, I'm not sitting here wringing my hands, it's all awful, and looking for someone to point the finger at or to blame. Uh, this is work for all of us to do. We need to do it as a team. The ones of us that are still in the parliament will come together as a strong, united team. As Environment Minister, you have been surrounded by a lot of people who love their environment, who are stakeholders in protecting the environment and who probably additionally think that we need to do more about climate change. But could you envisage the success that the Teals had, and in particular the Greens had, last night? No, I couldn't. Uh, it surprised me. I've got to say, though, conservative values can very well be about the environment. In fact, they should be. So conserving the environment, uh, appreciating nature, our natural landscapes, and doing much to protect them are absolutely what we did as a Liberal Party and as a National Party. Now, the interesting thing about climate change and the way it was perceived, I think that our messaging was strong, but I think that people didn't hear a lot of what we had to say. And they were too easily, I think, seduced by alternative messages. But that's something we have to look at, we have to own and we have to take responsibility for. I mean, I never sat back and said, look, we're 1.3% of global emissions, job done. I always said our role is to support developing countries to move to renewables, to transition. It's our innovation. It's our smarts. It's our technology. It was our technology roadmap, with, which, by the way, Labor will hang on to. Um, I have no doubt about that. That helps the rest of the world transition to lower emissions technology at price parity. So was it a lack of... Unless you get the price parity right, you know, how can you expect other countries to adopt renewables? So do you think it was a lack of perception about the Liberal Party, the Coalition's commitment to offsetting climate change? Or do you th think you actually need to do a lot more out there? Or is it, was it just perception? I think it was many things. And I'm certainly not going to blame the perceivers, if you like. Um, the people get it right. The, I, I mean, I, I can't thank my voters for electing me 
and turn around and say to the voters in another electorate, you got it wrong. So something went wrong somewhere and clearly we perhaps didn't tell our climate change story well enough or people tuned into a message that wasn't the core liberal message that I certainly talk about wherever I go or people misunderstood. And the other thing is that uh, so many people on that side of the Great Dividing Range haven't been to this side of the Great Dividing Range, where rural members of Parliament live and breathe the reality of the changing climate and the adaptation of our farming landscapes every day. And we're actually quite comfortable with all of the things that we're doing. And we are ambitious and we want more, but we also understand what climate change means for the Australian landscape. And sometimes I wonder whether, you know, I, I mean, this is my constant refrain as a rural MP, and I know it's Holly's, and she's done an extraordinary amount to actually bring people to our regional areas to give them a better understanding of, you know, our lifestyles and landscapes. OK, leadership. Peter Dutton has put his hand up. He'll be running for the job. Um, there was mention today mm. by a few commentators about the idea of putting a woman in charge of the Liberal Party. And I raised this with Karen Andrews in February of last year. Have a listen to what she said about this. Do you ever have an aspiration or ever had an aspiration to run the country? You uh, must have. When I was 25, I no longer have. You no longer have? I don't want to be Prime Minister. You don't want to? No. You don't think you could do the job? I think that what I am doing now is the best place for me. Would it be a positive thing for the Liberal Party to consider someone like Karen Andrews or even Susan Lee to take hold of leadership? Well, our leadership uh, ambition needs to be around the issues that are important to women. I'm not going to talk about the individuals who might put forward those ambitions. It's um, one day after the election result. It's less than 24 hours. And I think what we need to do is talk to each other. We need to understand each other and we need to have those conversations rather than transmitting messages um, uh, through the media. Important, though, it is to talk to programs such as yours. I'm very happy to do that. So... Um, we need to heed the message that women have told us because, as I understand it, many women in the teal seats were not happy with us. And, you know, I, w I want to sit down and hear from them. I want to hear what they're not happy about and really understand what we as a party can do to either embrace that or explain that or do things differently or do things the same but in a different way. So there's so much that we do have to talk about, but we have to reach out and we do have to listen. Good luck with the rebuild. Congratulations on retaining Farrah too, by the way, and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Susan Lee.